Welcome to your Paraben's quick training. We're excited to give you some concise and precise methods and techniques for using the Paraben E3 platform in your examinations. Our topic for today is gathering data from the cloud. Now let's get started with a quick outline of what we'll be covering. First off, let you know which tools this is available in. Currently, the cloud data import is available in the E3 Universal License and the E3 DS License. We're going to go through what data is collectible, how you export the authentication data, and then importing via the cloud wizard and the review of that valuable data. So let's first talk about what data is collectible. Typically, we focus on different apps associated with smartphones to be able to gather that cloud information or those cloud keys. Currently, we support Facebook, Gmail, Google Locations, Google Drive, Twitter, and the Amazon Echo. These are available for both Android and iOS, and they should be available through the current firmware release as we are constantly adding updates to this. When you go through and export authentication data, authentication data is what allows you to be able to collect these cloud keys, or as we refer to them as the spare key, to be able to gain access into their accounts. If you try to think of the cloud keys the same way you would as a spare key to your home, you can open that door to your home with the same authentication or the same quality as you would with the original key. That's the exact same way that these cloud keys work. That means that the user has no idea of knowing that you have gone through and opened with a spare key to their cloud account. When we go through and do this, we use an importing option through our cloud wizard, which is an example we have for you that we're going to go through next, which is for Android OS devices. So now let's get started. To make things easier, I've actually already opened up my case and I have it available inside the E3 interface. Uh, I'll see that I have my primary device over here and then I have the data that I collect. I've actually already imported some of my cloud data, but I'm going to walk you through how to do it as well. So the first thing I'm looking for is I have my device and then I have all of this data over here. I'm looking for a directory called authentication data. Authentication data directory is actually done by Paravin's tools itself. It is not something that the user creates. We do this just to give you an easy reference point in the tree view so you can go through and see how you want to collect those keys associated with the cloud. You'll see we have our data file over here. I'm going to highlight it and then I'm going to right click and choose to export. I have to take this authentication file outside of my case because it's going to add new evidence into my case because I'm going to authenticate to the cloud and download that associated data. So I'm going to choose to export to folder and I'm going to go through and choose to do my desktop. In this case, I'm going to actually choose my example case. I'm going to click OK and I'm choosing to export. My task information is shown here that says it has completed that task. Now I'm going to go up to my ribbon and I'm going to choose my cloud import function. That's going to start a separate wizard associated with my E3 tool and then it's going to walk me through what I need to do. So the first thing I have to do is select the accounts that I want to import. So this is where I'm going to add the authentication data file. I'm again going to my desktop. I put it in example case. And we see that's the file that I had just exported that was my authentication data. I'm selecting to open. And as soon as I do that, all those different authentication keys that were associated with my different cloud accounts are now going to be opened up for me to review and see what I want to do. So I have a Facebook key, I have a Google Mail fee, and I have a Google Drive key. So each one of these is available to me. If I don't want to select one like Google Mail, all I have to do is unselect it through the check mark on the left hand side. At this point, I have not communicated to the cloud. I am simply reading data that I have gotten from my original acquisition. It is always recommended that you make sure you follow your local legal rules associated with working with cloud data prior to proceeding past this point. As soon as you select to authenticate, you'll need to make sure your machine is connected to the internet to be able to communicate to the cloud. Once I select authenticate, it's going to authenticate those keys up to the cloud server associated with each of these accounts and verify whether or not that spare key I have collected from their de smart device is still valid and able to be used. These all came up as valid, so I then can, can select continue. 
When I have continue selected, I have a couple last options for me. This is where I can select a date range associated with my collection because I'm going to actually do an acquisition from the cloud. So if I have a limited time window that I am allowed to see that data, I can do so by selecting those date ranges that might be legally available to me. In this case, I'm actually going to select everything associated with each of these cloud accounts. If I want to see what available data type is available for each cloud account, all I have to do is highlight that account and we see that that information is over here. If I do Google Mail, I'll see messages. If I see Google Drive, I have files and file lists. So that part on the right here of available data types will always be refreshed for you. One of the other cloud accounts we're missing in here as an example is Amazon Echo. For that one, you can get recordings as well as commands given to the Amazon Echo devices. We'll have a separate quick training just on the Amazon Echo. Now we can choose to import this data and then we are communicating with the cloud and importing it directly out of their cloud account. As you see, we're pulling their Facebook. This is the equivalent of doing a full forensic image associated with their Facebook account. Same with their Gmail or Google Mail and Google Drive. So as it goes through and continues to query each of these, it's going to capture that data for me and it's going to add it into my primary case for me to be able to do my analytics. So we'll let our case go through and finish completing the acquisition. We select finish and this dialog here tells me that my import has been completed and it has been added into my case. I see I now have two case nodes over here in my tree. I can expand this bottom node here. We see I have now a collection of different cloud data with each of those three accounts. So now let's look at what we can actually see in each of these accounts. It's great to be able to capture this information because we weren't able to capture it through traditional methods. Many apps are moving to cloud storage. So you're gonna see more of this methodology be added in the future as more and more of them move where their data is being stored. So first we're gonna look at the general profile information. So if I were looking at Facebook, this is what their Facebook account is. This is Nick Sanders. He's set up as one of our aliases on Facebook. It tells me the time zone associated with them, what their gender may be, their birthday, et cetera. So it's all the same information that they input when they set up their Facebook account. It tells me how many friends they have and the connection to those friends on Facebook. Uh, you can tell my potential suspect here doesn't have a lot of friends at this point. We can see the different conversations they've had and who they have been with. So we have Nick Sanders talking with Mike Truman. We have David D talking with Nick Sanders, etc. And we can go through and expand those to actually review the conversations and what they were talking about. Similar how we would see it on any type of device or in any type of instant messaging, we'll be able to see that same information here based on that cloud data. And you'll see a variety of it from one person to three people that Nick might be communicating in as a group. I can also see their news feed associated with their Facebook account and any of the conversation lists that they might have back and forth as they were going through it. That's not all that you can get with Facebook as well. Of course, Facebook is a big social media resource to be able to store pictures. So we have all of the picture information associated with our account and we can see that we have details over there as well as timeline photos that might have been posted for that account. And finally, the picture album list, which you can see in this case, we have two of them, which was our profile picture and our timeline photos. As you know, Facebook is a primary social media for many people, so you can gather a lot of valuable information just on Facebook alone. That wasn't the only cloud key that we were able to capture from this device, so let's look at some of the others. We now have also their email, and we're going to look at their Gmail. We have their inbox, so what we're expecting to see is, of course, different email messages that we have associated with it. I'm going to just move around my dialog a little bit to make it a little easier. We have the same fields that we would normally see in email, the date they received, the subject, and we have a preview of what the text may be as well. So we have different options, and we can review it just like we would normal email messages. We have our Facebook security accounts, 
Uh, we also see that they have a Fitbit because they received an email from a Fitbit. So this type of information can, of course, lead us to other additional pieces of digital evidence that we might want to review. If they had any chats associated with Facebook, they might have it here. And then we can see any of the sent mail that they might have sent in this type of or in these cases we have here, they have a need for money, so they have requested that from someone else. If we wanted to look at the details of this message, we can go through and look at further content analysis associated with it. We can see whether or not we've performed any functions associated with it, like indexing. And we can treat all of these just like we would a primary piece of evidence. So we can run our sorters, we can go through and index them, we could run OCR associated with it so we can pull all the optical character recognition if they had any attachments. You have all the regular functions of the E3 platform available for you for this new type of evidence that you've added with Gmail. And finally, we have our Google Drive. This is a great area to look for data that I think a lot of people will uh, not pay attention to, but um, it stores a lot of your backups of information. For example, I personally like to back up my Android device into my Google Drive account, and so this is a primary area that you would look for for any of the photos associated with my device. Many people use Google Drive for that, especially Android users, because of the different opportunities uh, for backup and the cheap data storage that lots of people like to use. So this is what happened here. He has his gang, he has his buddies. We can go over here and we can look at what his buddies look like. Oh, and then his bro here, etc., etc. Items that were shared with him. We have healthcare properties, so this is different information about healthcare that we might want to look. Items they trash, so we can go and we can look at that. And then, of course, that file list, which represents all the list up here. So you can see you have a variety of information. This information will dynamically change every time that you go through and collect different cloud keys associated with a user. Again, those are collected inside of an authentication data file associated with your E3 platform. You export that out and then you bring it back in right up here through your cloud import wizard. This functionality is available in the E3 Universal and the E3DS versions that both support mobile devices. Um, it is included in its original price of the tool, so we hope it is something that you enjoy using throughout your examination process. Join us again for another quick training in the future. Thank you so much.